Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side. Or number 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, 844-236-6010 is your number. If you have questions about our Truth Skin Health products, comments, or success stories you'd like to share, 844 236 6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products that you hear advertised or recommended on the program, you can head over to our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. We have blog posts and videos and news stories up at all the websites, and you can also purchase products right off the websites as well. Our Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Healthy Start Pack, Fucoid Z, Ultimate Nightly Essence, Ultimate Selenium, all the longevity products. You can check them out at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business if you're an entrepreneur or if you like the entrepreneur lifestyle. You can make your own hours. Make as much or as little money as you like. Get your products at the wholesale price. Enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business. Offer a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business. Call 866-735-2470. They can give you the information, or you can sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And don't forget to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Truth Retinol 5% Gel made with copious amounts of vitamin C in addition to 5% retinol, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactants, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream if you're dealing with sunburn or broken out skin or rashy skin, Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream. I designed that, formulated that many years ago. For, uh, for burn patients, for one burn patient in particular, I've been selling for many years, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We left off our last program talking about food. By the way, I did a Facebook post at the Critical Health News FB page. I'm uh, practicing doing, uh, taking advantage of Facebook's video services now. It's the first one I did. I'll plan on doing more. It's Critical Health News has their own Facebook page. You can check it out. We've got blog posts, and now we've got videos up as well. Yesterday, I did one on food. It was a, a live stream, they call it. And uh, the topic was calorie restriction, which is based basically the idea that the less we eat, the longer we live, the less we eat, the better, uh, better we feel, the less calories we ingest, the less likely we are to get sick. We talk about drugs all the time on this program. We talk about medication. We talk about how medication is serious business, and the less you interact with drugs, the better off you're going to be. 
And one of the hallmark ideas of the bright side, in fact, is the less you have to medicate, the better off you're going to be. And if you're on a prescription drug, your number one health challenge or health goal should be to figure out how to get off of it. Nobody should ever, 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 ever be on a prescription drug long term. I understand that there are times you need a prescription drug, specifically pain pills or perhaps antibiotics, or if you have a hypertensive crisis, you may need to have some kind of antihypertensive to lower your blood pressure in the very short term. But nobody should ever be stuck on a drug for life. This is twisted, evil witch doctory. It's not fair for a, a healthcare professional to just abdicate his responsibility or her responsibility to take care of their patients by sticking them on a drug. And guess what? Food is the same way. The less you have to eat, the better off you're going to be. The less you have to medicate yourself, the better off you're going to be. And the less you have to eat, the better off you're going to be. Because food is drugs. Food is medicinal. Food is medicine, for better or for worse. For better, because you can heal your illnesses, you can prevent disease, and you can have energy to have an awesome life by understanding and leveraging the power of food, using food intelligently, using food strategically. For worse, because the same medicinal and healing properties that food has for getting us better, for getting us healthier, for giving us more energy, the same medicinal properties that food has in a good way can mess us up big time in a bad way. It can make us sick. It can make us sickly. It can cause disease. It can cause fatigue. It can cause depression. It can cause pain. Our food can ultimately cost us energy. Our food does ultimately cost us energy, and our food does ultimately kill us the way we eat. The medicinal power of food has to be acknowledged and respected, or we will go into eating default mode, which is part of our human being hardwiring. It's part of our evolution. We eat from an evolutionary standpoint if we go into default mode. We eat the way our primitive ancestors ate. That is, going for the calories because our primitive ancestors didn't have a lot of calories. If we don't pay attention to what we're eating, if we don't acknowledge and recognize the medicinal aspect of food, we're end, going to end up eating by default, and we will both individually, as individual people, and as a culture, be in big, big trouble, which we are, because we're paying the price for our innocence, our gullibility, and our ignorance around how and why and what we eat, because we are hypnotized to eat. We're hypnotized to eat by institutional interests that are diametrically opposed to our individual interests. And once again, we see the same battle between the individual and the institution that is everywhere. It's always the institution versus the individual. The individual is us, the institution is them, and we see this battle take place in government, in the legal system, in the health system, in the food system. And by the way, all of these systems, the government system, the law system, the legal system, the health system, and the food system, they're all in cahoots. They all work together. And they all work together to empower themselves against the individual. The government, the legal system, the health system, which includes hospitals and drug companies and insurance companies, and our food system, they're all working together to disempower the individual. Not intentionally to disempower the individual, probably. I'm not sure about that yet, but it doesn't have to be intentional. The net effect is that we get disempowered when food and health care become a commodity. We get disempowered when we don't understand the legal system. We get disempowered when we have to deal with the government. You ever try to call the IRS? Have you ever tried to call the IRS because you had a complaint or you had a problem or you had, to, you had to address some issue or you didn't get your refund check? It's impossible to talk to them. It's impossible to talk to government. Government is completely unresponsive to the needs of the individual. And it's not any different if you call your insurance companies or you're dealing with the healthcare system in some way. This is the vision, by the way, of a guy who said in the 1930s, quote, there will no longer exist any individual arbitrary will, nor realms in which the individual belongs to himself. The time of happiness as a private matter is over, unquote. Guess who said that in the 1930s? Adolf Hitler, yes. The time of happiness as a private matter is over. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We shall return right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we 
are back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here. Got uh, open lines for you at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or your longevity business or formulations or ingredients or health challenges your loved one may be dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number. We can help you out. And if you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase longevity products, head over to brightsideben.com or criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com. Also, sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're health-minded, if nutrition has helped you or a loved one in, in your life and you want to help change other lives, if you're just the kind of person that loves nutrition, you probably are if you're listening to this program. There's a lot of us out there who just love the idea that you can nutriate yourself back to health, who love the idea that, that there's this power at our disposal that we have via our food choices and via the supplements we take to take, over, take charge of our health. Health is not a medical issue. This idea that health is a medical or a pharmaceutical issue has been foisted on us by institutional interests that are not the same as ours. And I hate to, you know, I, I like this program to be the good news, but we got to recognize the bad news. And the bad news is, is that we're being hoodwinked. We're being hypnotized. And it's not, at the end of the day, it's not only is it self-serving, but it ends up killing us. It ends up accounting for millions, billions, even trillions of dollars. That's with a T, trillions of dollars. In, in costs that could be going, going to really making us better, to building roads, to uh, taking care of homeless people, to really making a difference in the world. All the money that we're spending on health care, where could that money be spent in order to really make a difference on the planet? We are so vulnerable at the level of food. We have to eat, after all. I mean, this is, this is uh, the, along with breathing the primary, and drinking, the primary imperative is to, is to eat. So we're all vulnerable. I got this uh, yesterday when I did my Facebook stream. I got this uh, comment or question from a gal who wanted to know about calorie restriction. That's what was, we were talking about. And she uh, wanted to know about overeating. She wrote about overeating, about being chronically hungry. I could totally relate to that. And probably a lot of you guys can relate to overeating, being chronically hungry, never, never ever being satisfied. We have this love-hate relationship with food. Eating the stuff ends up causing what is probably the most common and troubling of all our health problems. We all love to eat. We all love to cook. We all love food. But the end result, we all know, is weight gain. And weight gain is probably the most common of all the health issues that people have. It's the most, if it's not the most common, it's the, most, it's the one we care about the most. We love our food and we hate our fat. Which, after all, our fat is nothing more than the food we love. So we have this love-hate relationship with food. We're hooked on it. We can't stop eating. So what do you do? If you're chronically overeating, if you can't control your eating behavior, if you have to endlessly snack all day long, first of all, no, it's not your fault. There are people who, are, who understand how our brains work way better than we do. They know exactly the hot buttons that need to be hit to keep us eating their food. And then secondly, it's not so much the food that we're addicted to. We don't actually even like the food. We like the components of the food. We like the sugar. We like the salt. We like the fat. Sometimes we like preparing the food. Sometimes we like the act of eating the food. The, pro the, the sugar, the salt, the fat, and the protein, they create biochemical changes. Biochemical changes in the brain that we like, that we like a lot, and that we become addicted to every bit as much as a junkie gets addicted to heroin and crack. Especially sugar, by the way. From Princeton University, scientists study binging and dependency in rats have found that when animals eat, ingest large amounts of sugar, their brains undergo changes similar to the changes in brains of people who abuse illegal drugs like cocaine and heroin. According to psychology professor Bart Hobel, quote, our evidence from the animal model suggests that binging on sugar can act in the brain in ways very similar to drugs of abuse, unquote. It's not our fault. We get, addicted to the, we get addicted to food, and that addiction is manipulated. We like preparing food. Preparing food is a way of expressing ourselves. It's an art form. It's one you can learn pretty easily. Anybody can, can crack open a couple eggs and make scrambled eggs. It's a way of socializing. It's a way of giving. It's a way of nurturing ourselves. It's a way of nurturing our loved ones. And we like the act of eating. Just the act of eating jacks up dopamine, your reward chemical in your brain. It jacks up pleasure chemistry, bliss chemistry. 
it jacks up, bl uh, increases bliss chemistry, reward chemistry more quickly and more powerfully than anything, than even than sex, to which eating food is related, by the way, from a biochemistry of pleasure perspective. According to scientists from Connecticut College, research supports the theory that the high fat, high sugar, uh, that high fat, high sugar foods stimulate the brain the same way that drugs do. According to neuroscientist Joseph Schroeder, quote, it may explain why people can't resist these foods despite the fact that they know they're bad, bad for them, unquote. When that spoon of Ben and Jerry's is dipped into that chocolatey goodness that everybody loves, and then the spoon takes a dip out of that ice cream and makes its journey up to your mouth, for those two seconds that that spoon is coming up to your mouth, all is right in the world. There are no problems. For those two seconds that the spoon is coming up from the ice cream to your mouth, from when it's dipped into the ice cream and it comes up to your mouth, everything's perfect in the world. You know it's impossible to think a crappy thought as a spoonful of ice cream is making its way to your mouth? It's impossible. Try it. This is why we get addicted to it. When that spoon of ice cream is coming up to our mouth, happy hormones are being secreted. Dopamine is being secreted. Reward chemistry is being secreted. Same with a French fry. Doesn't have to be ice cream. French fries, Hershey Kisses. It's the, it is the uh, foods that have super high energy in them. That's what gets us into trouble. Because our hard wiring in our brain is directed, it, uh, directs us to find high energy foods. Because for m millennia, there were no high energy foods, or it was rare. It was hard to find high energy foods. This addictive quality to food doesn't necessarily happen with broccoli or asparagus. Nobody's addicted to broccoli or asparagus or, or, or cucumbers. Unless you train yourself. You can train yourself to become addicted to broccoli. You can train yourself to love broccoli. If you put lots of butter and salt on your broccoli, which are very high energy, right? There's not, broccoli's not super high energy. It's got good stuff in it, but it's not super high energy. But if you put butter and you put salt on your broccoli, that, that broccoli becomes a, a dessert. Your kids will love it because now you put high energy into that broccoli and the brain loves high energy. The body is so brilliant that it has come to equate the input of high energy with pleasure. The pleasure sensation is linked to, uh, to high input of high energy, to the ingestion of high energy. That way we'll always go for the high energy. That's how evolution works. This is the brilliance of the body. The body links via the brain and pleasure chemistry feeling good with high energy foods. So we get addicted to them. And over the last 200 years, food processors have figured out that they can make billions of dollars, maybe even trillions of dollars worldwide, if, if they could figure out how to produce high energy foods cheaply and then sell them to us. And that's exactly what they've done over the last 200 years. They perfected the art of creating super high energy foods cheap. That's called food processing. They figured out how to compress energy and make foods super high energy artificially. Or even better, they figured out how to make foods, uh, foods uh, be disguised or, or pretend to be super high energy. That's what chemicals do. This is what flavor additives do. They pretend, they disguise, they trick the brain into thinking a high energy food is about to come when it's not necessarily the case. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll continue this, uh, this discussion on food. Actually, we'll take your phone calls as well when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 uh, is our number. We do have lines open for you. We will return right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We have lines open for you, and we will get your calls here in just a moment. Uh, if you're on hold, so... Uh, hang tight if you're on hold. We'll get to you here uh, as soon as I finish a couple stories that I find interesting. By the way, you can check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com and the Longevity products at pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, brightsideben.com, and benfuchsarchives.com. All right. From... Let's see here. This is the Center for Virus Research in Kirby Institute at Westmead Center's store liver center. Zinc may hold the key to fighting liver disease. This is a study that demonstrated, quote, that zinc naturally inhibits the inflammatory and antiviral effects of interferon, a protein strongly associated with uh, tissue damage in chronic liver disease. 
When you have hepatitis, your body starts to produce chemicals, and as it turns out, zinc can help mitigate some of the toxicity associated with these inflammatory chemicals. Zinc is powerful stuff, people. It is amazing stuff. And deficiencies are common, and the stuff is ridiculously cheap. You can get 100 zinc 50 milligram capsules for $4. And it is unbelievably important if you're dealing with acne, if you're dealing with skin health issues, if you have uh, eczema, if you're healing from a burn, if you can't handle your sugar or if you have blood sugar problems, zinc's very important for the blood sugar system. And nobody gets enough zinc from food because it's only found in very small amounts unless you're eating lots and lots and lots of Rocky Mountain oysters or oysters in general, which are probably nature's best source of zinc. Nuts have some zinc in them. But still, you're not gonna get what you need unless you supplement, and it's so easy to do. If you're taking zinc as a supplement, make sure you also use copper, which is in balance with zinc. Copper and zinc are in balance the way calcium and magnesium are in balance, and when you start taking zinc, if you increase your levels of zinc, you can start to lose some copper. So you wanna make sure you're taking two milligrams of copper with your 50 milligrams of zinc every day. All right, from Nature Medicine. The gut microbiota, that is the bacteria that live in our gut, play a key role in treatment with classic diabetes medication. How do you like that? Unbelievable that they're just now discovering that you can use probiotics and good bacteria to keep your blood sugar under control. This is the, the, the link between the first point on our triangle of disease and, uh, and link number two. The triangle of disease are the three points of disease, three points of bodily breakdown that everybody has when they're dealing with a chronic long-term health challenge. Heart disease is secondary to the triangle. Cancer is secondary to the triangle. Alzheimer's disease is secondary to the triangle. They follow the breakdown at the three points, which I call the triangle of disease, the digestive system, the blood sugar system, system and the adrenal thyroid complex. Our digestive systems break down way too early in the womb for many people. Certainly as soon as we're born, and if you're in your 40s or 50s, guaranteed that your, your digestive system started to break down as soon as you left the womb because we didn't really understand the microbiome or the importance of intestinal health until 20 years ago or so. So if you're, even if you're in your 30s, but definitely if you're in your 40s, 50s, or 60s, or 70s, or 80s, we didn't recognize the importance of the microbiome at, the point of, at birth, at the point we enter into the world. So for many of us, we break down at that point most of us. Once that breakdown occurs, it's a very short jump. It only takes a few years. By the time we're seven, eight, or nine years old, we're starting to become dysglycemic. Our blood sugar is starting to get thrown off. That's the second point in the triangle of disease. The, di the blood sugar system regulates energy. It's an energy system. Once we can't regulate energy correctly, the adrenal glands have to kick in. That's where adrenal stress, adrenal fatigue come in, uh, come into play. The adrenal glands are linked to the thyroid. The thyroid becomes suppressed partly to compensate for all that adrenal hormone, all, that, all your jacked up coffee energy. The thyroid starts to become suppressed also because of the digestive issues. All, thi all thyroid problems have to be backtracked to the digestive system as well as the blood sugar system. And then you're off to, to the disease races, but it starts with the microbiome. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Texas. Good morning, David, welcome to the Bright Side. Yeah, hey, good morning, Dan. Yeah, this hey. is David in Austin. David, um, Graves I'm, disease, X Graves disease, Dave, Dave that's is that me, you? That's return, me, return from the grave day. <laughs> um, and I can vouch for everything you just said, because everything you just talked about applies to me. And, the triangle. You lived the triangle. Yeah. Or you, you noticed that you were living the triangle. The, through the nightmare, man, and you got me through it. And um, i got to awesome. say I'm stronger and healthier than I've ever been in my entire life. Good deal. Um, I love you, it. Buddy. I love it. Thank you for for sharing that. I love hearing success, success stories. Yeah, it's incredible. So what's going on? So I've got a friend slash patient. He's not, you know, I don't consider myself taking patients, but I help a lot of people based on what you know, on the advice, advice you give. And I have somebody who has what's called, well, he thinks he has what's called Morgellons disease. Okay. And, and I've been looking it up, trying to help him with it. Does he have the sores? Um, he has the sores and these weird fibers coming out yeah, of them. Yeah, you can see the fibers. Chemtrails. You can see um, the fibers. You can see these fibers, and he he treats it right what now the, with diatomaceous earth. Okay, what, well, you know, he's on the right track there. What do the fibers look like? <laughs> They're like these weird, like almost like black, 
black hairs. Black hairs coming out of the sores. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Here's the deal, okay? When the, whenever you have a skin problem, you've got a toxicity problem, pretty much. Now, it can be, it can be uh, exacerbated by nutritional deficiencies, certainly, and stress can mess things up. But you're basically dealing with some kind of toxicity issue. The skin is a, a, a route of elimination. So when you have toxicity inside the body, it's going to end up eventually, if there's, if there's enough of it, it's going to end up coming out of the skin. The, skin will, the body will use the skin as a way of egressing or eliminating these toxins. They, and they don't start off in the skin, or they don't start off in the surface of the skin. The skin is made up of layers, and we don't recognize this, so it doesn't make sense sometimes how the inside is connected to the outside, because it just looks like the skin is on the outside of the body, but it's not. If you recognize that it's layered, and you have to use your imagination or your x-ray vision to look at your skin, look at your hand right now, your arm or whatever, and just look at it and use your x-ray vision and picture that that skin, which looks like it's a covering, is actually made up of many, many layers. And the bottom of those layers are essentially the bridge between the inside and the outside. It's called your dermis or your connective tissue. And this dermis and connective tissue, in addition to being a bridge between the inside and the outside, is also the part of the skin that gives the skin its strength and its resilience. And most troubling, it is the site, the dermis, the connective tissue, the this, this stuff that's underneath in the lower levels of the skin, is a dumping ground. It's a site of, of elimination. It's where the body will eliminate uh, immune complexes and toxins. The body uses the connective tissue, especially the connective tissue in the skin, as a dumping ground for toxins that are in the blood. Does that make sense, Dave? It does. The blood Absolutely. is circulating. The blood is circulating through the body, and it's got all these toxins and dirt and you know, stuff that it's uh, that's coming in basically through the digestive system, and it's kind of protecting. It's it's protecting itself once it gets too toxic by dumping the stuff out. And the, where, where does it dump it out? It dumps it out into the connective tissue. This is where connective tissue diseases begin. Now, on this, when we have arthritis, that's obviously a connective tissue disease. That does, that's not hard to understand. But when we have a problem on the skin, sometimes we don't recognize that it's, a connect, it's mostly a connective tissue problem, too, because it looks like it's on the surface. And then we go to people who fix the surface. We go to doctors who fix the surface, who specialize in fixing the surface, and nobody's looking at the connective tissue aspect this bridge between the inside and the outside. Hang on, Dave. We'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Definitely. You're listening to The Bright Side. We will return right after this. We are back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to David in Texas. David, you there? I'm here. Okay, so uh, before we went to break, I was talking about the layers of the skin. The very bottom layer is a bridge between the inside and the outside. When the inside, via the blood, gets too contaminated, it dumps its toxins off in the connective tissue throughout the body, really, but especially in the skin because this, it, it, the body can eliminate it quickly out of the skin. So you see in all health challenges that involve the skin, or, or many health challenges that involve the skin, you'll see especially things like Morgellons or fibrosis or scleroderma or, or uh, uh, psoriasis, especially immune problems, uh, you'll see lots of blood vessels. Ex excessive amount of vascularization and lots of blood vessels. It's as if the body is trying to eliminate stuff through the blood. So it's opening up the blood vessels. There's more blood vessels so that the stuff can get dumped out. The stuff gets dumped out in the bottom of the skin, and that's where problems occur, at the very bottom of the skin. To make matters worse, the dermis or the connective tissue, if you like, whatever you want to call it, that lower layer, has little fingers. It forms little, uh, little uh, uh, extensions, it, just like little fingers. They call them uh, papillae, the technical name for them. They stick out. They stick out into the epidermis. So not only do the toxins get dumped out into the bottom, but they get dumped off into the surface of the skin or the relative high surface of the skin where the skin cells are growing. And this is where you get all kinds of inflammatory and immune reactions that disturb the functions of the cells, that cause breakdowns in the levels of the cells. And that's where, you're in, that, that's where your symptoms occur from. Whether the symptoms are rashes or whether the symptoms are, are breakouts or whether the symptoms are boils or more 
gallons. You're dealing with toxicity that's coming in from the inside through the dermis into the skin cells. So it looks like it's on the surface, but it's starting way deep inside, which means you're not going to be able to address it topically, which is why dermatology is the dumbest of all medical art, medical sciences or arts or whatever you want to call it, branches of medicine. Dermatology is the dumbest because they're treating the skin and the problem, is, or the surface, and the problem isn't at the surface. The problem is underneath in the bloodstream and then into the dermis. So with more gallons, focus on the blood. Is my, that's a long-winded answer, which I wanted to, I did intentionally because it's not just more gallons. It's eczema, psoriasis, rashes, you know, ichthyosis, whatever. Ichthyosis is a, a now they want to, I was just reading, a, a, they want to use a, antibiotics to treat ichthyosis. Ichthyosis is a, a, a scaly skin condition, which is basically the same stuff that I'm talking about, the result of the same stuff that we're talking about here. So anyway, more gallons, focus on the blood. It could, the chemtrails certainly don't help. You know, and uh, I, don't, I don't know what the logic is of, of putting that stuff in the air, but there's got to be some reason they're doing it. But it certainly it isn't going to help you, but it's not the cause of more gallons. So this is a okay. guy who's got to go backtrack, as we all do, not just him, but as we all do, and as everybody specifically, if they're really sick, if they're not feeling well, has to do, um, backtrack to the digestive system. Figure out what he's Basically eating. The same thing that I did. Yeah, you know, you could do it as well as I can. Exactly. You lived it. You're, you're better off. You're better at it than I am because you actually lived. You actually lived this. This isn't theoretical to you. I was kind of skeptical whether it's an actual disease. I'll be frank with you. I just I, you know, no, here's the thing, though, Dave. Here's the thing, Dave. It's a name. Names aren't diseases. We name things, then we say it's a disease. You follow me? Because it has a name. That's a diagnosis. That's the power of naming. That's the power of language. Language has a certain power. As soon as you name something, it's real. You know, that's how you make uh, a wise man once said Lang or reality is created in language. You name something, it becomes real. And so when we name more gallons, it becomes real. It becomes a thing, as they say now. But the, the name is irrelevant. He's got boils and cysts and growths coming on his skin. And once you understand you divorce the problem from the name, now you have some power. More gallons is just a word. You can't treat a word. There's no way to treat a word. But once you eliminate the name and you say there's growths on the skin, there's an inflammatory reaction that's occurring in the skin, there's an immune system defensive response that the skin is exhibiting, then you have some power. You say, okay, well, it's a defensive response. What's the offending agent? You follow me? If it's more gallons, it's like, what the heck yeah. do I do? It's more gallons. I can't treat a more gallon. What's a more gallon? You described right? it perfectly yeah. to me. Yeah, so it's really not. It's a set of symptoms. That it's a set of symptoms. It's a constellation of symptoms that is, was discovered by a guy named Morgellon, probably. <laughs> it is so silly, this idea of naming things, and then we go in to have our name fixed. No wonder when nobody gets better. You can't fix a name. <laughs> you can't yep, fix yep. a diagnosis. There's so much debate right now whether it's an actual disease or not. And it's it's a, a disease because they say it's else. a disease. It's a disease because yeah. they named it. They made it a disease. It's like my mother. Why do I have to do that, Mom? Because I said so. You know? It's like it's a disease because somebody told, just told us it's a disease. It's a set of symptoms. It's a constellation of symptoms, and that's where your power comes from. All right, Dave, I'm going yeah, I'm I'm to motivate you. Have a call, man. All right, buddy. Be good. Take care. All right, uh, I hope that makes sense because that's a very, very important point. Nominalization, the power of naming things, pow empowers the people who fix the names, the doctors. It doesn't empower us. We don't care about the name. We care about how we feel. We care about what our skin looks like. All right, 844-236-6010. Let's go to Melba in Texas. Good morning, Melba. What's up? Yes, good morning, Ben. I listen to you often, and I so admire you and all thank of you. your knowledge and your program, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. That means a lot. I want to ask you about varicose veins, especially okay. my left leg. Okay. So three years ago, I had a, ve a venous ulcer on the front of the left ankle bone, and now, um, of course, immediately they wanted to do, I'll call it vein surgery, punch five little holes up and down my leg, <laughs> pull out the vein some, and reroute, right. I think is the word. So it's, I've got one again, and it's been even worse. Here is the deal, Mel. But it's a, circula button. it's a circulatory problem. Your blood's yes, not moving right. That's the problem. They can take all the veins out they want. This is stupidity, the model. You've got a circulatory problem, sweetheart. Your blood's not turning, making the circle. Circulatory means circle. The blood's not making a circle. It's yeah. not going upwards. The blood makes a circle from the heart and then around the body, right? Right. Like a circle, circulatory system. The second, the return trip, there's no push. There's no pump. 
So things tend to pull down. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of muscle movement for the blood to go upwards. As our body breaks down, that doesn't happen. What makes matters worse is as the body breaks down, the valves that are supposed to keep the blood from going back, from dropping back, become weakened. And the veins become weakened. The tissue around the veins, the, vein, the, structural, support, the structural makeup of the vein becomes broken down. That's what your problem is. It's in the circulation and in the vein. So what you got to do is you got to, number one, start getting your circulatory system back in order. Now, I'm guessing you're 50s, 60s kind of thing? A little bit older, 73. Uh, okay. Well, that's just par for the course. You're not unusual. Get that circulation moving first and foremost. Get, uh, now, hemorrhoid, uh, 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 constipation can sometimes make matters worse. So if you have digestive issues, especially constipation, you've got to focus on that. Make I yourself don't regular. That. Don't have you, constipation. You don't have constipation. Oh, that's yeah. good. So Because pushing can make matters worse. So mm -hmm. you're good on that, on that regard. Look for digestive issues always because that can cause a sludginess in the circulatory system, and that will make it difficult for the blood to make its return trip. So look for digestive, uh, dig digestive issues always. And then also blood sugar issues because sugar makes blood sticky too. So you want to clean the blood. Uh, everything we talk about on this program. Uh, secondly, get on a nutritional supplement program that uh, specifically things that work with the blood, things like the B vitamins and vitamin C, your water-soluble nutrients. I would be getting on the ultimate niacin. I would be using the Fucoid Z. That's a, a wonderful way to improve uh, circulation. Uh, and then, of course, the whole Healthy Star Pack that can help you. Uh, make sure you're get, uh, moving your body, doing some kind of muscular movement, walking briskly, getting on. If you can get a rebounder, that's ideal. Anything you could do to improve the circulation of blood. And then uh, if you have any uh, blood pressure issues, I'm, you may or may not. I don't no, know. Is, no, I've always had really good blood pressure. Okay, so you've, is everything, everything else okay? Anything else happening? Yeah, I'm really Just the, in quite good health. Yes, I'm still teaching and everything. Well, I'm this is working. all great, but this is, this is a great, good and bad. Your teacher? Are you, did you yes. say your teacher? That's awesome. Excellent. What do you teach? Uh, literature mainly, composition. Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. Are you a PhD? No, sir. Okay. So here, here's the deal. Uh, you gotta, uh, if you're saying that you're perfectly healthy but you have varicose veins, you're missing something. And I'm not saying that to be mean or to beat you up. No, I'm saying no, no, no. there are clues you're missing. So you have to find clues. You can't solve a crime unless you, unless you have clues. You've got to collect the dots before you can connect the dots. So you've got to find the clues. We've got one clue. That's the varicose veins. It's a good clue because it's, it's, it's very meaningful. But you've got to have a few more. You've got to look for the digestive issue, digestive thing and the blood sugar. Those are, those are two keys. It's very difficult to have varicose veins without a digestive issue, a blood sugar issue, and a, uh, a thyroid issue as well. Well, the link there is the adrenal glands. That's our triangle of disease, as we called it. So you really want to focus there. And then a slow, deep breathing can help oxygenate the blood and also has a blood fluidizing effect, help thin the blood and improve circulation. That's a ton of info there, Melba. Thank you so much for your call and your kind words. Appreciate and let it. Let me just ask you, uh, Ben. Yeah, so I'm wearing the compression stockings. Is that a good idea? It's not going to solve your problem, you know. Uh, I mean, it might help a little bit, but your problem's coming from the inside. I got to go. And we're at the end of the program, sweetheart. That's good to talk to you. Thank you so much for the kind words. I appreciate it. And thanks for your work as a teacher. Appreciate that also. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to the Bright Side Friends. Check out our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com for all the longevity products, and truthtreatments.com for our truth skin health products. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.